The winners of last year's Grammy Awards may still be singing for joy, but executives at their record labels are mostly singing the blues. And that is because the traditional coin in a slot jukebox, like this one, is under fire from new high tech devices, say this one, which plays music digitally, thanks to which the person who calls the tune doesn't pay any piper at all. Our cover story is reported now by Anthony Mason. For the past week, in rehearsals and at parties, the music business has been preparing for its big night. At the Grammy Awards tonight, the industry will celebrate its own. But there isn't much to celebrate. Album sales fell 11% this past year. The industry sold more than 100 million fewer CDs and cassettes than it did two years ago. By every measure, there's a crisis in the music business. I hope it doesn't get worse, but I don't, I don't see it getting better. To songwriters like Diane Warren, author of dozens of hits. It's scary though. It's scary, like how can, how can one you know, make a living Selling records. I don't know. Unbreak my heart. How do you make a living selling records when records aren't selling? Games change, yeah. The internet has changed the equation. When will they go from here? When will they stop? Enabling users to download songs and make or burn their own CDs. What you It's not that people are listening to less music, they're just not paying for it. Half my CDs are burn CDs. The only CDs I buy are by artists that I really, really, really think are like important artists and like I think deserve it. Yeah, that kind of sucks for the artists, but that's, I mean, that's just the reality. It's the society that we live in, you know. Why, does anyone want to pay $15 if they don't have to? No. I don't think so. It's the same as me going into a store and saying I really love that shirt and walking out with it. I can't do that. I don't, I don't own the shirt. I, I didn't pay for it. When you're taking someone's, you know, when you're without their permission taking something off the internet or burning a CD or burning someone's property, you're, you're, you're stealing. Have you ever been hated or discriminated against? I have. The industry's response was to make the internet its enemy. It won the battle, closing the infamous Napster, the original free music website. But it's losing the war. Where do you, where do you get your music from mostly? Kazaa. Kazaa? Yeah. Kazaa, the new Napster, is a file sharing service. By downloading Kazaa software, any user essentially can take music from any other user's files. By some estimates, Kazaa now has 60 million users, 22 million of them in the U.S. alone. Bag your face, I'm sure. Including almost any song you can think of, and it's all free. The recording industry is trying to kill Kazaa, too, but the genie may already be out of the bottle. I mean, how do you arrest these people? How do you shut them down? You shut one of these things down and a new one comes up the next day. I mean, it's... I don't know what they're going to do. It's such a shame. In the past, the music business has been able to exploit new technology to sell more albums. When CDs replaced vinyl, the record companies could resell the same old product in the new format, as customers had to replace entire collections. This time that's not working. No, it isn't. And, and one of the Howard Stringer is CEO of Sony Corporation of America. How are you going to deal with the problem that a whole new generation of teenagers has essentially come to view music as free. Well, yes, but the, uh, music is free and it's a wonderful idea until there isn't any. Stringer has reason to be concerned. Sony's music division lost $130 million in the first six months of last year. 
These kids are going to want to make music, some of them. These kids are going to want to make movies. These kids are going to be part of the creative process. It isn't enough to say, while I was a student, I stole everything. But now that I'm a grown-up, I'd like to go into the industry. And you'll, the answer will be very simple. What industry? Let's get to the Is the industry, as Wired magazine suggested, a hydrogen-filled Hindenburg about to burst into flames? The music that I made, it is my baby. If you create Many well-known artists are appealing to the kids who are stealing their music. music. It's the same thing as going into a CD store and still in the CD. And the record companies have been suing internet sites and trying to sabotage them. Is that the correct response? I don't think so. Jan Winner, the publisher of the rock and roll bible Rolling Stone, argues the industry has only itself to blame. It should have embraced the internet, he says, instead of attacking it. It's a competitive response, it's, it's, but it's more like uh, you know, throwing nails out in front of somebody else's gas station. That you think that that gas station should be operator hasn't paid for the gas or something like that, but still, it's throwing nails out in front. It's not offering a better station across the street. The music business has finally begun to offer its own alternatives. Press Play is an internet site jointly owned by Sony and Vivendi Universal. And you can simply uh, hit the button, and uh, immediately the song begins to play. For $9.95 a month, Press Play CEO Michael Bebel says you have access to a quarter of a million songs. For an additional charge... You can purchase songs uh, on demand uh, that you can burn to CD or transfer to portable device uh, for about a dollar a song. Bebel won't divulge how many subscribers Press Play has, but he knows the pressure is on. We certainly have a lot of focus and attention from the music industry. Um, I don't know that they're looking for us to bail them out, but they certainly are looking for us to, to succeed. But some artists aren't waiting to see what the industry does. The band Big Head Todd and the Monsters knows fans are sharing its songs without paying for them. Do you have a problem with that? Not at all. What justifies you charging 18 bucks for it? It's sort of like a broadcast. We look at it as, hey, if, if it gets another fan involved and gets somebody excited about what we're doing, then in the long run we're better off for it. The Colorado band, which survives on ticket and t-shirt sales, had a million-selling album in the early 90s. But Big Head Todd later split with its record company and released the new album, Riviera, on its own label. Theoretically, you're losing CD sales, aren't you? Sure. Sure, but a band that's at our level of success, we've never seen profit on our record sales anyway. So now we actually are because we're doing it ourselves, so we get more per unit earnings. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Bang, 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 bang. But Todd Moore, Rob Squires, and Brian Nevin admit the big record label helped get them national exposure. And now they fear the record companies might not give newer bands that chance. They want the sure thing. They want to, to, you to go in with the co-writer and make a song that they know they can put on pop radio and sell, you know, as, you know a million records. We reckon we're going to lose 600,000 jobs in the record industry worldwide over the next year. That's, that's a, a serious decline in the ability of companies to market and harness and discover young talent. Sony's Howard Stringer. We've got to make the case against piracy um, because otherwise the music dies. Survival will mean change. Lower prices, lower profits for everyone even for those gods of glamour, the rock stars themselves. And that's really what, to me, the, is going on, is the industry, you have a lot of millionaires just trying to hang on to their meal ticket, <laughs> you know? It's Grammy night, and for the record business, it's time to face the music.